Hello, everybody uh, from Singapore today, uh, day three of our campaign with the Catalan Tourist Board, Catalonia, the secrets beyond Barcelona. Today, we are going to go south of Barcelona, all the way to Tarragona, Costa Daurada, Terras de l'Ebre, and Lleida Pyrenees. So we're going to take you all the way from the beach to the mountains. And I'm going to start the day with Tahira. So it'll be Tahira and I at the beginning. Hello, Tahira, how are you? Hey, I'm good. So excited to go to the south of Catalonia, one of the most yes. I think today we are discovering parts that definitely many of you will not have seen or heard of before. Uh, even for me, there were parts that I've been discovered discovering, even though I am from Catalonia. Uh, and so today is day three of our campaign. If you've been watching us live in the last couple of days, you know that every day we are taking you somewhere in Catalonia, either a very well-known place like yesterday when we went through, um, you know, Sagrada Familia, Casa Batlló, La Padrera, Casa Vicenç, and Hospital de Sant Pau, five UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Barcelona. And on Monday, we gave you lots of tips and tricks for planning your trip to Catalonia. And then we finish in Parkway. Tomorrow, it will be all about food. And on Friday, we will finish in Girona Costa Brava. But today, it's a treat because I'm pretty sure we're going to be taking you places that you've never heard of before. So if you are watching us live, like many of you are right now, say hi. Tell us where you are. We always love to hear from you. And also, if you have ever been to Catalonia or to the places that we're going to be showing you today, I would love for you to tell us because it's always exciting to hear all of your trips around Catalonia. So, what is the program today? As I was telling you earlier, today is day three of the campaign, and we are visiting Costa Daurada, Tarragona, and Lleida Pyrenees, which are two main regions in Catalonia. It's basically everything that is on the west uh, and south, southern part of Catalonia, south of Barcelona, and south of France, and east of the rest of Spain. And we are going to start with Susana, who is part of the Costa Daurada um, tourism team. And we are going to this little park here, as you can see, the province is Tarragona, but the region is Costa Daurada. And I'm going to bring Susana, who will tell you all about it. Hello. Hello, Hi, guys. Susana. How are you? Susana, Hello. so nice to see a sunny background. Yeah, it's sunny today, yeah. <laughs> and you are in Cambrils, right? Yes, I'm in Cambrils uh, right now. Um, well, um, I wanted to come here because this is one of my favorite spots of the Costa Daurada, yeah? Uh, actually, I live very near from here, only 10 minutes from here. And now I'm sitting in a charming restaurant uh, in a camping place called Camping Juan. And this is a very nice restaurant next to the sea. I hope you can see the sea in the background. And yes, we can. And the palm okay. trees, you know, the palm trees swinging. Oh, perfect. The <laughs> and the birds, I can hear the birds here also. Yes. Well, this is a very <laughs> nice place and this is one of my favorite spots, as I was saying. And I come here just to chill out, sit down, reading a book, back up and just, you know, enjoying the local food. And and that's what, that's one of the things that, one of the things that uh, we local people like to do here, you know. Uh, so this long promenade is one of the things that we enjoy. Uh, we go here walking, uh, cycling, uh, so you will see people passing by because this is one of the things that we enjoy doing here and this is one of my favorite spots. So just, yeah, so just walking from here, from Cambrils to Salo, uh, all together you, ha you can walk like 15 miles. So you you never get tired of those views and enjoying those or enjoying this mediterranean weather yeah because um our mediterranean weather gives us this opportunity because we never have extreme temperatures here so nor high temperatures in during the summers neither low temperatures during the winter so we can enjoy this mild weather all year round yeah yeah and that's absolutely. why Mm -hmm. We and like I to live a, outdoors. I have a nice video that you sent me to share mm -hmm. with uh, with everybody watching today from all the women working in tourism in Costa da Brada. Shall we play that one? Yes, please. Yeah. Let's do it. Hello, my name is Elena. I'm the director of Mas Miró, a museum of the worldwide known painter Joan Miró. 
Welcome to Costa Daurada. Hello, this is Marta Domenech from Hotel Hostal Sport in Priorat, the wine region in Costa Daurada. So, welcome to Costa Daurada. Hello, my name is Conchi and I work at the Tourist Information Office in Salo, providing you with useful information for your stay. Welcome to Costa Daurada. Hello from Marco Abella, a wine seller in Priorat. I am the winemaker and we are offering wine experience in Priorat. Welcome to Cuesta Dorada. Hi, I'm Nuria and I want to share with you our secret paradise. Welcome to Le Meridian Ra and welcome to Costa Dorada. Hello, my name is Rosa and I am a tourist guide in the monastery of Poblet, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Welcome to Costa Daurada. Hi, welcome to Lumine. My name is Rita and I work here at the resort. We have three golf courses, two of which were designed by Greg Norman. We also have a stunning beach club where you can enjoy our amazing coast. Welcome to Costa Daurada. Hello, my name is Maud and I work in Calatas Tourist Office, helping visitors to get the best out of their holidays. Welcome to Costa Dorada! Hi, my name is Laura and hello from Port Aventura World Park and Resort. A world of unique experiences with three theme parks and six theme hotels is waiting for you. Welcome to Costa Dorada! Awesome, I think it's a very heartwarming message to start with. And now I'm going to pass the mic, let's say, to Susana, who is going to tell you all about Costa Daurada. Just to highlight that we have two international airports. Uh, Barcelona Airport is obviously the most important one and connects us uh, to the world. But we also have a local airport, which is Reus Airport. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have flights to Singapore or New York. Uh, but we do have flights to, from UK, so if you guys are listening from UK, uh, you have to know that you can take a plane and just land here. So easy, so comfortable, yeah. Uh, we are, as you see, we are very near from Barcelona. Tarragona is our capital city and it's only one hour far from, the, from Barcelona. Uh, so you can go to your vacation in Barcelona and you can come to Costa Daurada just for an indulgent experience, for instance, or all the way around. You can stay in, stay in Costa Dorada and go to visit Barcelona. You can, you, we are also connected with a high speed train in only 20 minutes. So as you see, it's very easy, very comfortable. Uh, this part of the Catalan coast is, is known as the Golden Coast because of the color of the sand. Uh, the way the sun reflects in the sand gives the, this golden color, and that's why we are well known uh, as the Golden Coast. So next, please. Um, I want to show you, well, this is Cambridge. This is where we are now. Uh, if I go walking along this uh, seaside promenade, I will get the town. And this, charming is, this is the charming town of Cambridge with a fishing, po fishing port. And um, uh, it's a quiet destination, but also uh, with a lot of life, yeah. Next slide. In next slide, we can see a different kind of beach. I wanted to show you this beach. This is in Salo, which is next to Cambridge, very near from here. And those are the kind of beaches that we have here in the south of the region. We are now in the south of the region, and we have this small base uh, surrounded by nature, by trees. And so I wanted to show you this picture for you to see what different kind of beaches we have. In next and definitely slide, golden, right? Definitely golden. Yeah, definitely sun. golden. Always golden. <laughs> you now uh, I show you a really wide beach. Yeah, uh, this is in the north of the region. This is, for instance, El Vendrey, and I wanted to show you this because it's very near from Barcelona. Vendrey is only forty minutes from the city. So, as I was saying, you can combine both destinations very easily. And you can find these wide beaches in Calafell, Vendrell, Tor Torre de Barra, Altafulla, all this area is very near from the city. And you can have these wide uh, beaches with top 
hotels, top resorts, top quality hotels, like for instance in Vendray, we have uh, Le Meridien Ra, which is a five stars hotel with spa treatments and uh, um, thermal waters. Um, so, so for you to have this well deserved indulgent stay. Yeah. Next, next a great slide. Time solo um, trip. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, by now, I'm sure you are thinking that we are a beach destination, and of course, we are a great one, but we are much more than this. And um, that is why we have an important legacy from, uh, well, a, 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 this legacy of an important heritage. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you this picture. This is a town uh, only 20 minutes from the beach, which is called Mont Blanc. And here you can see the walls of the town. Uh, how well preserved they are and it's worthy a visit also yeah uh, so we can also amaze any cultural lover with this legacy of uh, of uh, of heritage yeah and next and in slide, mont blanc every year if i'm not mistaken they re i mean mont blanc is a medieval town right and every year people dress right. up like in the time and they rehearse the battle i think that happened or something mm -hmm. like that well it's the the legend of saint george Oh, okay. Which is represented there, yeah, because uh, according to our history, well, history, according to a, a legend, uh, St. George was uh, killed the dragon in this town of Mont Blanc. So they are representing every year this legend of St. George killing the dragon. Yes, which we saw yesterday in Casa Vallo, right? So yeah. for those of you who were watching us yesterday, that's the same St. George, the same dragon. The Just, same one. You yeah. know, in Casa Vallo, you have the representation of what happens in Mont Blanc. But Mont Blanc is quite impressive. I don't know if people can realize from this picture, but it's a whole village that's surrounded by the wall. Yeah. Right? So that's it's right. like you're in a fairy tale. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, um, this this legacy that we have, uh, is not only for, for it's not only related to heritage, but we also have this. Uh, you, you can go to the next Tahira. Thank you. You were right here. Yeah, this is the house where Pau Casals was born, and um, this is one of our universal geniuses. I'm not going to talk about Gaudi because uh, we will um, we will read Karma. Uh, later on, which is an official tourist guide from Reus, and she will talk about Gaudí. But Gaudí was born here in Costa Daurada. You will learn it afterwards. And uh, also, Pau Casals was born here, and he was uh, a cello player and an orchestra conductor. Um, he was very well known all over the world uh, for having uh, for having make a revolution in how to play cello. You know. He was so influenced that nowadays everybody's playing cello in the same way that that he he was teaching cello, and um, he was also very well known for being a, a peace and freedom activist. And so you can visit the house where he was born here in Costa Daurada is preserved as a museum. And in the next slide you will see uh, all, another of our universal geniuses. This is the workshop of. Joan Miró, the famous painter. And um, here you can visit the house where he used to expand, let's say, like um, long retreats. And uh, this house was, uh, was from his family and he came here for these long retreats. And uh, the workshop is exactly the same way as he left it. So you can see the brushes, the drafts uh, hanging on the walls, the canvas everything in the same way that uh, Joan Miro used to have it here. And you, and the most important is that you can visit the landscapes that inspired him. So you will be able to see the picture, the real picture that he, he painted and the landscape of this picture, which is really amazing to see uh, this be these beaches, these hills that in, uh, inspired Joan Miro, yeah. And, um, we can go to the next. Uh, this is, well, as you as a solo female traveler, you were talking in, on your presentations about hidden gyms. And for us, this is our hidden gym, let's say. It's Siurana. This is a medieval town. 
uh, on top of this hill, as you can see. And uh, well, if you visit the town, um, they will spend, explain you very interesting legends and histories about the town. But what is really stunning is the landscape. Um, I, I bring groups of people to visit Tirana all the time. And I and always, I mean, the, the way to the top is like a little bit long, you know, because it's a narrow Yeah, because you're basically road. going like this. <laughs> yeah, but they always say that it's worth it. When they arrive there and they see the landscape, uh, they say like, wow, this is really, it's really worth the trip, you know. And this is one of the things that I wanted to show you um, just for you to see how how different our our region is. You can go in 30 minutes from the beach where we are now to these kind of places with with this charm. Yeah. Shall I play a short video that I have of Siurana from my last year? Yes, please. I think that let's everybody see. will then let's have watch a good it. feel for how mm -hmm. uh, Siurana looks like. Okay, let's watch it. It really is quite impressive feeling me up there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Okay, so let's go to the next slide because I want to show you, yeah, this is Mon Poblet Monastery. Uh, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. One, uh, I mean, uh, later on we will also read Georgia, not only Karma, but also Georgia from Tarragona. And she will talk about uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Site in Tarragona, but we also have some of uh, some pieces out of the of the town, and this is Poblet Monastery, which is, uh, as I was saying, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and is uh, the largest monastery, uh, the, the largest Cistercian monastery in Europe, with a, mo a community of monks living inside, and this is what makes. Um, the monastery unique, let's say, yeah, because there is a, mon a community of monks living inside. Uh, so when you visit the the place, uh, it's not only important the architecture and and uh, all all this art work that you can uh, enjoy in in the monastery, but also this atmosphere of spirituality. Uh, you know, you can go to the church, for instance and listen to the monks uh, while they are chanting the Gregorian chants. So this is a really, really a, a spiritual experience to visit the monastery. That's why I suggest it all the time because, of, uh, because it's not only uh, seeing heritage, but also this sensation of uh, living among monks, which, uh, which makes it very special. Uh, you can see that the monastery is surrounded by vineyards and uh, uh, vineyard is uh, a landscape that you will see in the whole region. You, you can go to the next Sahira and you will see uh, a vineyard landscape. Um, I mean, in Costa Daurada, grapes, grapes are our product, you know. There is not a piece of land without a vineyard. Uh, we really have a, a wide production of wine. We have seven denominations of origin, which are like the, the labels that the government gives to prove the quality of the wine, these denominations of origin. And uh, we even have, I mean, there, are, uh, there is a label which is at the top quality and uh, there are only two in the whole of, in, in Spain, there are only two 
regions that has this label. One is Rioja and the other one is Priorat. And you can find Priorat here in Costa Daurada. So we are producing um, one of the most, some of the most prestigious wines of the world, some of the most uh, famous wines in the world here in Costa Daurada. And of course, uh, if you go to the next, um, this gives uh, gives us the opportunity of offering a lot of wine experiences to our visitors. Uh, so any kind of experience related to wine that you can imagine, like hiking or, of course, wine tasting and cooking classes with wine, uh, if we go to the next, I think we will see a wine tasting yeah, among the vineyards, for instance. So you can enjoy, enjoy all these kind of activities here in Costa Daurada. Uh, we can go to the next uh, because, well, yeah, I wanted to talk uh, about the gastronomy, you know, because gastronomy is really important for us. Uh, in fact, for all the Catalan people, gastronomy is very important. We make, a, I mean, we, we, we make every celebration sharing meals you know we have uh, me we are sharing meals in every special occasion and we do it always with a good wine it's uh, i mean it's a must to have a good wine on the table and um, that you will find this in costa daurada you will find a lot of uh, good quality restaurants but not only michelin stars restaurants that we have of course but also these modest, charming restaurants, as the one that I am sitting now, and uh, in every one of them, you will get a great gastronomic experience. So uh, I suggest you to taste our local gastronomy. If we go to the next, uh, yeah, I want to. Right, right. Everything in Catalonia is about celebrations, wine, and good food, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so if you come here, you I suggest you to go to the local markets, yeah, like this one or the next one. Uh, you can get involved with the people, you can ask them. If you go to the next, I think you will see fishermen. So just ask the people, what are they doing? What are they selling? Because they are really proud of their products. Uh, they put all their souls in uh, growing their products or... Uh, uh, fishing and, and and they are very proud of it and you will find very talkative people open to explain you what are they doing and this is the way that you can get uh, involved with them and get these genuine act, um, activities that that uh, that really make the difference in a trip you know so I suggest you to do that because it's very easy here in Costa Dorada even for a solo female traveler you know you will find all those people willing to explain what they're doing and and welcome you in their businesses or whatever you know if we yeah, go, to, go the next, to the people go to the market eat the food drink right. the wine perhaps. yeah that's right <laughs> yeah this is the most important experience and um what what do we have in the next is um well i just wanted to show you a little bit of fun because we also have fun here in the destination it's not only culture and culture yeah Tahira, I think in the next one we will have Porta Ventura. Ah, yeah, yeah the, we were talking about genuine experiences, and this is our top one of genuine experiences. Uh, I don't know if have you ever seen these uh, human yes. towers? Yes, okay. absolutely. I grew up in <laughs> Vilafranca, El Panadés, so oh, I saw a lot of cafes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. I got to see them live. Actually, we saw Menions de Terraza, which is from Costa Daurada, mm -hmm. right? So I have a mm -hmm. very, I have a poster of them in my office and very good memories of, of all of them. So hi to them if they are watching. <laughs> yeah, and we we'll play the video on Monday on the Castellers because they are oh, really? very tangible really? UNESCO World mm -hmm. Heritage. Yeah, well, the thing is that they were born here in our destination in Costa Daurada. So we have a lot of teams of uh, human uh, of human towers and but this is not the most important thing i mean here you can see a competition and they are very focused on uh, doing it uh, as well as they can but on the next slide you will see it in a square and this is what i wanted to share with you you will see two women here i was i was guiding those two women in a visit and i uh, and they offered them to join 
the 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 castell, you know, the human tower, and they did it. And so it's so easy. I mean, uh, during the season, which goes from March to November, uh, we have this demonstration on the squares every weekend on Sundays and Saturdays. I mean, you just have to check the calendar and go to the to the place where they are performing. Uh, different teams from different places, but it's a really amazing experience for you to share with the local people. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. I also find it interesting that when I joined, actually, once in Tarragona, they asked me mm -hmm. to join La Pina, which is the bottom. That's right. But mm -hmm. if you are very light, maybe, and you are young, you can go to the very top, right? Yeah, not to the very top, but they can, uh, yeah, but you can go to the first or second floor. Uh, yeah, if you are, if you want to do it, you can do it. Of course, you you can also go to the rehearsals. Yeah, uh, you can visit their uh, pavilions where they are uh, training and uh, it's open to public just with the reservation. You can, you can also visit the rehearsals. So it's very interesting. Yeah, I cannot imagine, Tahira, you would, you would be brave enough to go and climb to the top? Yeah, I would love to. I don't have a fear of height, so I would love the bird's eye view. <laughs> Next time you come, we will do it, I promise. Yeah. Um, well, this is, yeah, as I was saying, we also have fun. Yeah, I wanted to, be, to, to give you two pictures of this um, amusement park, uh, Porta Ventura. This is the aquatic park, and the next one is from... Uh, from a uh, roller coaster, that's right. This is Porta Ventura. Uh, just for you to see that we have this amusement park. So if you if you want to spend a day there, you can also do it. And you were right here in the next slide. Um, I just wanted to show you very quickly because I'm, I think I'm running out of time. Very quickly, some of the sports activities that you can do here. So if you feel active and you want to improve your skills, you can also do it here in, in Costa Daurada. You can hire an uh, uh, electric bike or you can join the runners that are going on the hills. Or this is Verle, for instance. You can join Mrs. Verle, which is a tourist guide um, specialized in cycling tours. So you can hire um, uh, a guide for, wow. for going in a cycling tour, with, which is a different way of knowing the destination, okay. yeah? The different like a professional, that's like a professional cyclist. Yeah, but you can do it also without being a professional. Of course, if you enjoy doing this sport, you can always do it. And um, on the next slide, yeah. Oh yeah, this is our team of uh, triathlon. Wow. Yeah, you can join them to go to the sea, swimming. And uh, next slide, what do we have? Well, yeah, the girls. And our uh, golf, yeah. Okay, yes, we have five golf courses. So if you fancy golf, you can also find here a place to go enjoying the good weather outside playing golf. And um, next, I think we have yeah golf as well. And next one, water water sport. Uh, which is, well, this is, for instance, uh, some girls play um, practicing paddle surf, but any kind of water sport that you can imagine, you can practice it here. You can hire a boat, you can jet ski, windsurfing, any kind of water sport that you can imagine. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's it for me. Wow, so nice to see in Costa Daurada. I know I love that you can go from the beach and you can go all the way up to like uh, you know mm -hmm. the mountains of uh, uh, well, La Serra yeah, del Monsan. Right. Is it Monsan? It's yeah. Monsan, right? Yeah, so that's Monsan, right. where Monsan. Siurana was up, up on top of the mm -hmm. mountain, mm -hmm. and then you can visit the vineyards of the of the Priorat region, which have like mm -hmm. very top high level quality wines. And then, of course, you can go to Tarragona and visit the yes. UNESCO World Heritage uh, site of the downtown of the Roman city, which is where we're going to go now. So we are going to wave goodbye to Susanna for now, but we'll come back later because she'll show us the beach and the sea, <laughs> and she'll dip her toes into the beach for us. And now we're going to go to Tarragona. So, so see you soon, Susanna. See you. And then we are now going to go to Tarragona city. So if you 
back to the to the map, right? That's Tarragona is a province and it's also a capital city. That was Susana that we just saw. And now we're going to go live with uh, with Georgia all the way from Tarragona. So hi, hi. Georgia. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. It, is a little bit, it is a little bit windy up here. Okay, I'm streaming from the rooftop of the uh, H10 Hotel here in Tarragona, which has probably the best views in town, which I wanted to show you. But we have, well, today it's a little bit windy, but uh, otherwise you know, the views are very good. And just behind you is the Roman Amphitheater and the sea, right? Yes, I can show it to you. One second, I'm going to change the camera. And so now we are absolutely live in the middle of Tarragona, so a little bit further okay. south of Cambrils, where Susana was. Nice. Let me cool. show you. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. Look at the yes. sea. Beautiful. And the amphitheater, which is what, like 2,000 years old yes. or something like that. Yes, this is the old amphitheater, the arena for the gladiator fight. And then you can see right on top of the hill, okay, the amazing medieval cathedral of Tarragona, right there. On the other side, you can also see the port of the city. Actually, from here, we can see all the surroundings, okay, in the town of Tarragona. Wow, yes, you're in you the see? best spot for like a yes, and best going on a spot holiday. Ever. What a beautiful okay. uh, pool, right? Yeah. yeah. Right here. And swimming in the pool. Sounds awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more, Georgia. Tell us about yourself and, and okay. about Rona. Okay. Uh, about, okay. I'm going to change the camera again. So you can see you. Okay, great. Perfect. Can you see me? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so a little bit about me. I'm a local guide here. Okay, I've been a local guide here in Tarragona for more than 10 years, actually. I work for a company called Itinere, settled here in the city. And, well, I have to say I love Tarragona. Uh, my family have been, has been living here for generations, actually. And I think that uh, my parents, my grandfathers were passionate about the history and the heritage we have here. So I think they, they passed it to me. And this is why probably I decided to study history and archaeology, have a degree here in the local university. And I, I decided to settle here and uh, I became a tour guide. Okay. And actually, I have to say it is always an honor to show the city to the visitors to come to our town, because I have to say, uh, Tarragona is an amazing place to live. Uh, basically, because Tarragona is a medium-sized city, so it has, uh, it's big enough to have uh, great restaurants, uh, you can go shopping, you have all the services, you have the entertainment. But on the, on the other hand, the city is small enough to be uh, slow-paced, it's very quiet, it's very nice to walk around, and you can actually walk everywhere. You can go everywhere by walking. You can go from the sea to the port and visit the fisherman's quarter here, which has great seafood restaurants. You can go to the Rambla Nova, which is the main street of Tarragona, which has a, an amazing promenade. And so uh, it is great to be here. Also, the city, you said it before, it is very well connected to bigger cities. So you can live here and you can stay here uh, and enjoy this quiet uh, city and then visit the bigger towns around. But I have to say that maybe the most extraordinary thing about our city is its, its, its past, its history. Because, you know, Tarragona, it is not only old. Tarragona is ancient, actually. Our city is more than 2,000 years old, and it was founded by the Roman Empire, by the Romans, here, the year 218 before Christ. Okay, so 2,200 2, years ago, more or less, the Romans came here in order to build a military camp. They came here to make war, to conquer the Iberian Peninsula. And right there, behind me, there's a hill in which the Romans decided to build this military camp. But what's extraordinary is that after building the, the military camp, after centuries, 
here the Romans built a city that was called Tarraco, that's the original name of our town. And this Tarraco became one of the biggest and most populated Roman cities in Spain. It was actually the capital of one of the biggest provinces on the Roman Empire. So the Romans built here. We could say they built here a small Rome. They put all the monuments a good Roman city needed to have. So they built for example, on top of the hill, a temple dedicated to the Roman emperor. They built a circus for chariot racing. They built the arena, this amphitheater I showed you before. They built roads. They built bridges and aqueducts and the mansions of the rich and powerful. And not only that, today we have, we still have those monuments. But uh, those monuments here, I don't know if you see but makes a special, really extraordinary our city. And this was uh, uh, said by the UNESCO uh, in the year 2000. Uh, the, uh, the city of Tarragona, the monument of Tarragona, well de were declared World Heritage by the UNESCO. And one of the things this committee from the UNESCO uh, said that was more important about our city is that the city, the Roman ruins, okay, and I'm going to explain that. Uh, people have been living here in Tarragona during do, those 2,000 years. So long after the Roman Empire disappeared, when the Roman Empire collapsed, the monuments remained. So the people kept living inside of them. And they are, as I was saying, alive. Here in Tarragona, you can, for example, visit the medieval cathedral, which is another amazing, extraordinary building, because it's perfectly preserved with paintings, with the stained glass windows. But this cathedral was built on the same place where the Roman temple used to be. And using the stones and part of the marble columns of this old Roman temple transformed into the city of Tarragona. Also, you can visit, for example, the square, okay, the place where the Romans had their government. And this square that was one of the biggest public squares ever built in the Roman Empire, today it's filled with the streets and the houses of the medieval uh, quarter of Tarragona. So you can walk around the medieval city within a Roman square. And also we have the second best preserved Roman circus in the world. And this Roman circus with the chariot racing, that's what happened there, this spectacle, this, this Roman circus that had a capacity for about 20,000 spectators. Today we have shops and restaurants inside the old galleries that used to support the seats of the circus. And this is what you can see only in the old part of Tarragona, because all around the city, you can find the Roman aqueduct. You can walk over the Roman aqueduct till today. Okay? We have those mansions of the rich. We have an amazing Roman cemetery, the, one of the biggest also in Europe. And as you were saying before, all of this connects uh, with uh, wine cellars, with the beaches, with Port Aventura, and all of this that we have around Tarragona. And uh, with that, I uh, so just want to say uh, I hope uh, you visit someday our beautiful, beautiful city of Tarragona. And I have actually, can you, I have a very short video of the aqueduct so that people yeah. can see what the Roman aqueduct looks like, because the Roman aqueduct is really well preserved, right? So it's yes. massive. It's very, very it's big and it's yes, perfectly yes. preserved. So it's quite impressive. So I'm going to play this video so everybody can see what it looks like. And then maybe you can tell us a couple of uh, sentences about it and, and what they were used okay. for, right? Of course. Okay. Incredible, right? Because I mean, uh, it's like it's yes. massive. It's massive. It's massive. See, 
it's only it's a part of the uh, longer aqueduct. Actually, this aqueduct in particular was about 30 kilometers long, and this is one of the parts best preserved. I have to say, this aqueduct, for example, it's around 2,000 years old, and it's made almost exclusively with stone, with no concrete, no cement, only stone put together, uh, making this huge aqueduct that we normally call, we don't call it aqueduct, we normally call it the Devil's right? Bridge. We yeah. have a Devil's Bridge. Yes. The Devil's <laughs> Bridge, because there is a legend, actually, a medieval legend, probably because in the Middle Ages, people were amazed at these great constructions. Nobody, n nobody knew who built this. So they thought, oh, okay, it must be the devil. So there is a legend <laughs> about the people in Tarragona that, that they needed a bridge, but they couldn't build one. So the devil appeared to the citizens of Tarragona and said, okay, I'm going to uh, I can build you a bridge, but I'll need the soul of the first person who crosses the bridge. So the people in Tarragona accepted the offer of the devil, but the day after three days, okay, uh, the devil was standing at one side of bridge, the citizens of Tarragona were standing at the other side of the bridge, and what they did in order to uh, not to comply with this, uh, um, let's say, pact with the devil, they took a donkey and put the donkey on the bridge and sent the donkey to the other side so the devil could have the soul of the poor donkey instead of oh. a citizen of Tarragona. <laughs> nice story. Something I will always Bye. Yeah, I didn't know it. That's why I, I didn't know that's why Pondal Diablo was called Pondal Diablo. Okay, it's good to know. <laughs> and I like what you said from when I visited Tarragona. People actually live in parts of this, like yes. literally they live in parts, yes, like yes, particularly yes. the circus, right? The circus, you have buildings that were built over yes. the walls of the over circus. So you'll have a shop, you'll have a house. Yes. Yes, the Cellars. Has, uh, it's the, the first floor of many buildings around here are actually part of the Roman circus. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, and uh, George, are you? I know that uh, you're going to. Now we're gonna we're going to go to Reus, but after that we're gonna go back to you and we are going yes. to see the amphitheater from nearby, which is the picture on the left that you can see on the screen, the Roman amphitheater that's more than 2,000 years old. We're just going to walk down and he's going to show it to us from closer by. Meanwhile, we're going to go to Reus. So thank you, Georgia, for the introduction okay. to, to Tarragona. Thank and you. we will go back to you soon. Okay. You. Thank you. See you soon. You. It's amazing Sorry. that uh, so much of Tarragona is well preserved. And when you're walking around, you can see all these Roman ruins everywhere, right? Uh, but yeah. I have, before we go to Reus, which is the next uh, city on our, um, on our agenda for today, on our virtual tour, of um, Costa Daurada and Taras de Lebra. I have a short video that talks about Tarragona, which I hope that for all of you watching us, Tarragona is probably somewhere that you probably didn't hear much about, if, if at all, yeah. right? Maybe you never even heard of it, right? So even though it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, even though it's like a, like a, a capital in Catalonia, you probably never heard of it, right? So if um, if you watch this now, maybe you hopefully have been, you know, your curiosity has been picked. But I have also a very nice video that shows how much of a hidden gem Tarragona and Costa Brava are, right? So let me play Costa that Brava, to you. Yeah. I, yeah. Costa da Brava. <laughs> it rolls out of my, uh, my tongue all the time. Um, so I have a very um, nice and like, um, what is the right word? A very quaint video. So let's see, we yeah. went, they went to ask into the streets of like cities in Europe, you know, what is this place that is on the pictures? And let's see what people thought when they saw images of Tarragona. Des fois, ça me fait penser à l'Espagne, des fois, ça me fait penser à l'Italie. C'est la culture romaine. Non, je ne sais pas. C'est Mérida, c'est Mérida. Ah, Venezia. Ah. 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 Muchas ruinas, mucha historia. These are definitely Roman. Oh, this is uh, this is uh, near the sea, so it may be Barcelona. Pero esto es España. Pero es Colombia. No. Marseille, du sud de la France. Greece, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, it's more Pompeii. Yeah. <laughs> 
Similar Roma, no? I'm sure it's the city of Spain. <laughs> um, I've seen this one before. Oh, Ooh. that's a Colosseum somewhere. Evoca Romana. Soldiers. The gladiators en train de de combattre. C'est un visage, un masque. Carnaval, ouais. Voilà, qui va être tradition, non? Comme au Carnaval en Portugal. Ah, les fameuses montagnes humaines. Ah, c'est bon alors. It's a kind of life that fire me. Gamberoni. Des haricots, des crevettes. Right, looks like here we've got some delicious prawns. Look very juicy. <laughs> Mais c'est très joli. Medieval. C'est l'Espagne. L'Espagne. Avec des, des, des beaux couchers de soleil. Greece again. Looks kind of like Los Angeles. I should know that actually. <laughs> c'est une ville en, en, en Espagne, c'est ça? Oh, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Wow. Catalogne. C'est ici. Veo la gente como disfruta. Yeah, I would, I would like to go there. Está muy bueno. I've never been to Spain. Pardon, c'est où? Tarragona? Tarragona. 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 Tar tar Tarragona. 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 Nos vamos a Tarragona. Perhaps I should go. <laughs> yeah, you should go. <laughs>
but uh, <laughs> on the weekends on Saturdays and on Sundays. What do you mean not every day? You can you cannot have a vermouth every day? Uh, well, yes, you can, but well, and maybe it's not uh, necessary. No, because uh, you know, maybe it's, it's worth it uh, to to drink it just a few days to enjoy it better. Oh. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So tell me, how how do you make vermouth? Yeah, so vermouth is a, a beverage. It's similar to martini, maybe you know. It's uh, but it's from Wales, of course, and it's uh, made of wine. It uh, is made up of uh, white wine and a maceration of different herbs. So each uh, factory uses the, uh, a secret formula, which is made up of different type of botanicals. And um, vermouth originated actually in in, the, in ancient Greece when a doctor called Hippocrates elaborated a medicine because originally this uh, beverage was not an energy drink that was just a, a medicine a remedy for digestive problems because it has properties for uh, digestive problems and it was made of wine and warm wood i don't know if you have ever heard this uh, word warm wood it's a type no of i didn't know that that's where the word came okay. from it's a bush whose uh, leaves uh, are used for, for elaborate, to elaborate this uh, drink and it has uh, medicinal properties. So well, later, in the 18th century, there was a producer who reinvented this, uh, this original recipe and he added other botanicals to obtain more pleasant flavor, but always with warm wood. And actually the name Vermut, which comes from German, means warm wood, warm wood wine. Yeah, this is the origin of this drink, which is very popular in Reus and it's exported to the rest of Spain, even to other uh, international countries. And, uh, so this is the, I love the symbol it. of and our you, town. And you, eat, um, you have your vermouth with what? Some chips, some olives, yes, some almonds? Always, yeah, it goes always with chips and olives. And this year, yeah, this year, this, this is your typical aperitif, vermouth, olives and, uh, and chips. And here, I don't know if you can see, I have this olive inside. The... Let me actually, I'm going to change <laughs> the screen so that people will see the other one. Yes, now I can see like the full vermouth. Moment, I put the microphone. Uh... Yes, perfect. Right. A slice of orange so, and a little bit of, and a, a couple of olives. Would you like uh, to see the rest of the square? Yes, let's have a look at Reus. Yeah? Okay, one moment. Because Reus is famous for vermouth and some other things, right? Among which, as far as I know as well, I think this is also where Gaudi was born, right? Or one of the possible places where Gaudi was born. No, I, I was telling that, uh, I was saying that uh, most of people think that Gaudi was from Barcelona because most of his works are there, but he was born in Reus and he lived in Reus until he was 16. And uh, right behind me, uh, maybe you can see a very modern building on my right. This is uh, Gaudi Center. Okay, let me show you it better. One moment. Yeah, because, yeah, as you say, many people think that Gaudi was born in Barcelona just because that's where he studied and that's yeah. where most of his uh, buildings are, right? But actually, yes, he was born in Barcelona. This is about uh, like an hour from Barcelona, hour and a half. Yeah. Yes, and uh, this uh, building that you can see, this modern building, is Gaudi Center. This is a visitor center dedicated to Gaudi. And here you find a lot of scale models which uh, represent uh, buildings. You can also find uh, state-of-the-art projections, uh, didactic resources to interact with, and it's a very good way to uh, learn about his architecture. Okay. Awesome. And then there's another well, building here on the square that's famous, oh, right? Yes. Yes, uh, this is Nalat's house, the one that you can see right now in front. Can you see it? Or left? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, so this is one of the most famous modernist buildings in, in Catalonia, actually. This is Nalat's house, which was built by one of the greatest architects uh, called uh, Luis Domenech Montane. He was from Barcelona. And, uh, well, as you can see, this house is it's, uh, stunning. It's very well preserved, not only the exterior part, but also the inside, okay? And, uh, well, uh, the, the, thing, the thing is that uh, in, inside the house we can see a lot of decorative artistic uh, motifs. We can find mosaics, we can find stained glass windows, sculptures. And, well, it, it's like being in another world because we are totally surrounded by nature. You know, that modernist style was uh, inspired by nature. 
um, it originated yeah. in uh, an yeah. industrial period uh, in, at the end of the 19th century. And let me tell you that actually at the time Reus was the Catalonia second town uh, behind the Barcelona. So it was a very important city, there were a lot of textile factories, and there was a very rich bourgeoisie, yeah, the rich social class, who boosted modernization in the town and who promoted the construction of these uh, standing houses, like the, the Lava's house. Does somebody live there or it's a museum today? There, it's yeah, it's, like, okay, it's a, uh, a museum, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, the, the monument was bought by a businessman here in Reus and uh, he has uh, promoted guided tours, so it's possible to be visited always with a guided tour, um, with small groups, and well, it's a very good way to, to learn about these uh, fantastic uh, buildings. Wow, can you imagine living there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, really opulent. It's very rich and, well, it presents the original furniture, the decoration. It's like living in a, an equivalent a world, very different from the industrial city that we had uh, at that time. That was the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like, well, you know, I'm going to, like, live in a massive house, very beautiful, in the middle of the city, on the main square, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, so the rest of the square you can see here. And as I told you, that was the, well, the, the marketplace in the past, eh, in the Middle Ages. And actually, nowadays, the square still preserves uh, the numbers. I don't know if you, if you knew that, because uh, we have the numbers which indicated the position of the stalls. Yeah, maybe I can show you these numbers, or well, this one of them. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. It's uh, really curious, eh? For example, here you can find one of them. Do you see it? Well, yeah. Like yeah. this. There are many others around the square, eh? so we can still see the well, the the footprints no, of of the path of this this uh, square. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And well. Um, I would like to tell you another important thing about Reus, uh, because uh, we, don't on, we do not only have monument buildings, which are very important, we also have a very important um, characteristic, which is the, uh, the lively atmosphere. Reus is the regional center for shopping. Uh, this is not the administrative capital, eh, which is Tarragona, but Reus is the commercial uh, capital. We have a lot of shops everywhere. This is like uh, now door shopping mall and uh, well, they offer high quality products and uh, up close and personal attention and well uh, even people from Tarragona come here for shopping eh? so this is a, a prestige uh, a privilege that, that we have and this is another attraction. So we go to eh? the beaches uh, of Tarragona and then we come to Raus for the, to do some shopping. Yes this is a good plan. <laughs> and for our mood obviously some shopping and some vermouth everything together. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Karma, for giving us a little bit of a tour of Reus and telling us a little bit more about weather tourism, about Gaudí, and about Bermud, which we are now going to enjoy knowing what it is that we are drinking. So that's great. Yeah. So thank you so much, Karma. Okay, thank you. See you, See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. And after Karma, I have a Tahira back with me. And after Karma, we are going to, what do you think, Tahira? Should we go back to the beaches of Cambrils or to the amphitheater of Tarragona? I think maybe to the beach. I think Georgia is actually reaching the amphitheater really soon. So maybe we can just check no, let's in go. on. I see Susanna to... is on the beach already. So let's have a look at the beaches of Cambrils. Okay. Hello, Susanna. Hello, how are you? Oh, look at this, so nice, yeah, right? Yeah, couldn't resist. <laughs> so, can you see this bit? Yes, we can. Well, this is now we're in the beach of Cambrils, Costa Daurada. That's right. Yeah, in the center of the Costa Daurada. Awesome, and I see today is a very windy day, and the beach is still pretty yeah. quiet. Um, That's and right. The, when yeah. the summer comes, I guess it's very, very popular here. Yeah, it's also popular at this time of the year, but today, especially today, it's a little bit windy. Look at this, how nice. We can hear the waves. 
We can see how nice the seas are clear, the sand as well. One of my favorite things about Catalonia is the blue sea. I think something that you take for granted, but something I always admire. I'm like 600 kilometers of the bottom of the sea. This extends all the way through the south where that's great well Susanna you're giving us a little bit of envy uh, I wish I was there with you but it's nice to see the beaches of Cambrils and to like you know explore a little bit more Costa Laurada so thanks for this uh, very nice tour thanks to you thanks to you thanks to all the solo female community for watching and thanks to you Mark for uh, this see you soon Susanna See you. Bye bye. bye bye. See you in the Costa Daurada. Bye bye. See you. Wow, Costa Daurada, amazing. Uh, it's nice to see the sea, right? To hear the waves, like, you know, it's kind of nice all together. And before we go back to Georgia, who will show us the amphitheater from up close, like, you know, before she was above and she was looking down, and you saw a couple yeah. of pictures, but when you're up there in person, and you see it from so close, it's like quite something else. But before we get yep. to that, I have a nice video of the culture, of how culturally rich the city of Tarragona is, right? We've talked, uh, Georgia has told you everything about the circus, the amphitheater, the medieval cathedral, the forum, everything, right? There's just so much in Tarragona, the walls of the city, everything is pretty well preserved and people still live there. But I think this video really encapsulates that and actually illustrates very well what you can see in Tarragona. So let's have a look at the video and then we'll go back to Georgia in the amphitheater. Okay. Living History Tarragona World Heritage City Well, I think this gives a very good idea of what you can see in Girona, right? I, in, Girona, in Tarragona. No, I keep mixing everything up. <laughs> Even though I've been to all these places and I'm from there. Yeah. Okay, good job, Mark. So I think we are ready to go back to Georgia and to see the amphitheater from up close, right? So let's see if Georgia is uh, with us. Hi. Hi, Georgia. Oh, my God. Look at you behind. <laughs> and the wind is always gone because I guess you were up high yes. an hour, right? Before, exactly. so it was like a very big much wind. Better. Okay, much so better. let me put you on the main screen so that we are like having you as the main one. Perfect. Now, wow. Now I see the amphitheater behind you and the sea. And the yeah. sea, yes, it's very, very close to the sea, actually. It's about 50 meters from the sea. 
Beautiful. Wow. So literally, just behind the, the walls of the amphitheater, there's like the beach. There's like a street, I think, right? And then the beach. Uh, there's the, the train rails and then the beach. Yes, that we call normal. Uh, this beach that right there is called Miracle Beach. Okay. <laughs> and it's the closest to the city. And how come do we city. call it Miracle Beach? Well, actually, the word uh, comes from uh, in Latin, which me, uh, the word, Latin word is miraculum. And miraculum means actually a uh, place with, be- with great views. Oh. Although it, it sounds like miracle, in reality, it's uh, with the great views. <laughs> oh, reality. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Can you imagine sitting on that amphitheater? And so, what sort of shows did, did the Romans do in amphitheaters? Was it like Excuse performances? Me? Oh, okay. what kind of shows? Well, the Romans here, they made mostly gladiator fights and also animal hunts and public execution. So yes, yeah, not a little bit terrible, but they did, they were a little bit, yes. Well, they had their entertainment here, although today our amphitheater has two old churches inside. Maybe you can see some remains in the middle of the arena. Those are the remains of actually two old churches built with the, with the stones and materials from the amphitheater later in the middle ages two churches were built here so it is Amazing. transformed to just like the rest of the city and there, are, there is a time during the year <laughs> sorry the year. Me? i heard that in may you can um watch like gladiator fights oh yeah is that yes fun? yes here in tarragona in yes in may we have a festival called tarracoviva tarracoviva is a festival of historical recreation in which we talk we have um, demonstrations, we have uh, conferences about the Roman life here in the city and in the Roman Empire and normally they uh, bring some gladiators, real gladiators from Italy and they fight here in the amphitheater actually they, came, they come here every year, the same group, so they have fun here in the city so people come, come here to cheer them up and to uh, root for them in the fight so it's actually it's very very it's very it's great fun sitting on the seats of the amphitheater and watching the gladiator fight. So that yeah. is in May? Yeah. In May, yes. Normally the second week uh, of May. So you're going to have it next week? Well, maybe not this year, but usually it would be next week. No, usually we have this. This year, this year we'll have the festival, although probably it will be made uh, more with uh, conferences, etc., instead of the gladiator fights, but we hope. Uh, we'll have gladiator fights soon here in the amphitheater. Also in summer, we have a local group making the gladiator fights here. Amazing. Can you imagine just yeah. sitting there? But no lions, right? No hunting and lions. No <laughs> lions. Not lions so far. No more executions. So there's some cats living there, but no lions. <laughs> Hopefully less fears than the lions. Awesome. <laughs> it's so nice to see the amphitheater, George. Yeah. Thank you so much for showing it to us. And thanks so much for the, the, the tour of Tarragona, our virtual tour of Tarragona City. I hope that we have inspired right. many to come visit the city. I hope so. See you soon. See you soon. Okay. Take care. See Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow, wow. Tahira. <laughs> Yeah, history that we just swallowed for the whole of today from Tarragona and Costa Daurada as a whole. We learned so much. Yes, absolutely. And after Tarragona, Costa Daurada, uh, we are going to Torres de Lebra. So, yeah, what is in Torres de Lebra? It's the southernmost tip of the region, and this is like the most biosphere-conserved area in the whole of Catalonia. It's also the largest river delta in Europe. And I think one thing that really surprised me about learning about this place when I got on this job was learning that there were flamingos living there all around the year when where they migrated from North Africa because of the temperatures. And now you can find um, flamingos there when you go by car to the little region in the end and also i think something that mar and i was talking before this started is that rice <laughs> comes from this region so it's a very delicious part of the cuisine as well that's not always eaten but when they do in the form of paella it comes from this little place yes basically if you look at the map of catalonia like maybe i can go back to the previous map if you look at the map of catalonia you're going to see this little delta 
here where the where my uh, cursor is right now if i remove the cursor you see like there's basically a part of land that goes into the sea and that is delta that's the delta it's been created by the erosion that the ebro river brings all the way from the rest of spain and the river ebro is very very long and it crosses many parts of spain and it finishes here in the delta area and so at the end of the delta you have all these like um swamps i guess is the right word in english where you can grow like rice so you can see here on the picture on the left and the one in the middle basically it's a swampy area wet covered in water always but rice is grown the rice to make paellas and to make other dishes and lots of seafood right so we have a nice video of terras Alegre so that you can have a feel for what uh, the region looks like Beautiful, wow. right? So much, so much nature, right? And there's many people living in that part of Catalonia. So it's very sparsely populated, lots of beautiful nature. We have obviously the Delta area, and then there's lots of other parts uh, in the region that where there's a lot to see, including the flamingos that you were mentioning, yeah. Anita. Actually, David, my director, tells me that when he wants to slow down in life, he goes to the south of Catalonia because he feels like the rural quality of life there is really easy to, you know, slow, your, slow down your breath and kind of find peace. So for those of you who are watching, who are interested in kind of like rural, slow tourism, slow food restaurants, I think Terra Celebra is a really good option to think about. Yes, it's definitely peaceful and quiet and much more like, a, much more relaxed. To, to start with, because there aren't any large cities, right? So you're always going to be like in nature, actually. And very few people live there, right? And you have all these like massive sand dunes created also because of the delta and the erosion of the water. And you saw in the video also like these massive beaches, yeah. very, very long stretches and nothing like the beaches near Barcelona, right? There's really like nobody in those beaches, as you could see in the video, right? It's pretty quiet yeah. all year round. So around a couple of hours from Barcelona Drive, all the way in the highway, you'll reach a... Uh, uh, Terras de Lebra, Tortosa is one of the main cities. And then just like relax and chill and enjoy really good food. There are also mussel farms, oyster farms, right? Yeah, and you could just take a boat to go out in the middle of the sea in the delta and you can have mussels freshly shot with a glass of wine and then looking at the vast sea and thinking that life can be so easy. What are we getting stressed about? And I was really lucky to do that. And I think that was one of my like, most beautiful moments in, in Catalonia, the mussel farm. And in the Look fact that it's in the middle of the sea was the, the most enticing part, I think. But we come <laughs> back to always the same, right? We come back to the great food, we come back to the wine, we come back to sit down with good company, enjoying the weather yeah. and enjoying the culture, which is what Catalonia is all about, right? Yes. And from Delta de Lebra, we are moving on to the next part of Catalonia that we haven't explored yet, which is the yeah. further north uh, west part of right. Catalonia, which is the Pyrenees and Lleida. Lleida is the other province in Catalonia. Catalonia has four provinces. Yesterday we were in Barcelona. On Friday we will be in Girona, which is the other main province 
south of France. And then today we're exploring the province of Tarragona and of Lleida. And Lleida is further north, inland, and very agricultural, lots of amazing food, vegetables, and nuts, and lots of things, olive trees, olive oil, grow in Lleida. And then you have the Pyrenees. It's the higher, yeah. the high mountains and lots of things to do, right? So let's see, what do we have? We have I have a few videos to show you about the, the Pyrenees area. Um, and we're gonna start with this one, which is has icons of Catalonia, but it has a lot of nature and a lot of highlights of actually the Pyrenees area. So let's see how many of those you can recognize. And then Tahira and I are gonna be telling you about a couple more of the ones that you will also see in the video. so many places that in that video not just yeah and pyrenees but also some throwbacks to the places in tarragona that we saw so yeah great really icons of catalonia as a whole amazing and so in the pyrenees as we can see here it's not just all about culture until today we've talked a lot about culture a lot about yeah. food and wine and having a great time <laughs> but in catalonia there's also a lot of sports and adventure to be had particularly in the pyrenees and the pyrenees covers almost the entire north part of spain almost all the way to the sea in Girona and all the way to, you know, Galicia in the other Western part. And Catalonia has a big chunk of the Pyrenees uh, within the territory. And so you have mountains that are 3000 plus meters high that are, there's hiking, there's skiing, there's snowboarding, there's paragliding, there's, you know, all sorts of nature and sports to be had if that's what your kind of a, a holiday, you will find it in there. And so we're going to tell you about a couple of those today now. I think yeah. you said, Tahira, that you, you did a couple of them, no? Or that, no, I was telling you that I am too scared to do some of these adventure <laughs> activities. I think some of the things that you said you were, well, we start with the most beautiful one because I think everything so picturesque always gets our attention, which, which are the Aitona flower field fields of flowers where you can do hiking or walking and this is kind of like the hanami season in japan like such beautiful uh, pink and purple flowers which are in a small part of yeda and they are actually peach trees right and like i i, I see the the catalan name not very well but Prasagues. 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 so peach because a peach is a presac 
So the tree that makes peaches is a prasage. So these are Aitonas prasages. These are actual trees that actually make peaches, right? This is not something for yeah. tourists, or this is not like a yeah. flower field to go and watch. This is actually a peach field. And in Lleida, as I was telling you earlier, you have a lot of agriculture. So Lleida is primarily agricultural because before you reach the Pyrenees, it's relatively flat and you have massive properties and not a lot of people. So it's very rural, it's very beautiful, and you have nature. And so we grow lots of nuts, like uh, hazelnuts and walnuts, and not almonds. walnuts, but almonds. And then we grow lots of olive trees, lots of olives. That's also where you make the olive oil and lots of fruits, like this one in particular, like the peaches. And this is massive, right? And, and we have a video that I'll play in a second so that you can have a feel for how, how big the Aitona fields are. But Aitona is the name of the village, right? These are just the yeah. fields around that village. And so you can imagine yeah. in between those, those trees, there's tractors that pass through. But also in recent years, tourists or visitors can go there and actually have a look at the, at the fields and at the trees from this path in the middle without disturbing yeah. the, the trees too much. And so when it's obviously a very short season, like Tahira was saying, it's like springtime, like Sakura, right? It's a short season in the spring when the trees flower. And then in, in, August, in, in autumn, you can go back again and see them all brown as the leaves are turning brown and they are falling. So instead of being pink, it's more like orange, right? But still very yeah. beautiful. And also, if you would like to see it from above, which is the video Mara is going to show, you can do like hot air balloon tours with Quantiki or as a hot air balloon experience where you get to see the whole thing from above, which is really astounding because it's entirely covered in pink, right? And that's just such a visual pleasure. So yeah, Mara will show you the video it's in a bit. It's very beautiful. Have a look at this video because you're going to have a feel for how big it is. Yeah. How amazing is that, right? Like it's just so beautiful and the music just goes with it. It kind of like it takes you on a little holiday. So yes, you can do like sunrise hot air balloons over the Aitona fields. You can visit it from the ground. You can even have weddings in the fields. I've seen people having weddings oh, wow. in the middle of the field. So you put like the tables, small weddings, but like in between the fields. So it's really very beautiful, but it's nothing like, like that I, now that I'm saying this, it looks like this is a major tourist attraction. Actually it's not. It's an agricultural area where it's mostly the locals or people from Barcelona that may go, but actually there's very few tourists. It's all very like local. And then best situation, if you go during the season, you can buy some peaches, which are the yeah. best thing ever. <laughs> and you were just telling us in the Monday session that like the peaches from Catalonia are very, very juicy. And I mean, yes. I've not really tasted this myself, but I think it's one of those special fruits, right? That come right from the harvest. So definitely something to try. Yeah, because peaches don't travel well with when it's like, you know, like if, if you import the uh, fruits, you need to import them in fridges, right? And peaches just don't travel well, right? So you can never have good peaches when you import them. Even if we get them, say, in Singapore, we do not have the same, it's not the same flavor. And it was nice to hear that Christina felt exactly the same way. She was the one who said yeah. that, you know, like the peaches don't taste the same in New York like they do in Spain. And I fully agree with her. But it's not just mm -hmm. Aitona and, you know, like beautiful almond fields and peach fields and olive fields and so on but also if you go further north into the mountains we have all sorts of adventure sports yeah so snow spots in particular can be done in the pyrenees of course in the above costa brava it can be done in Val in Valderan as well which is the northmost tip of catalonia which we talked about on the first session on monday where they have their own native language as well and it's completely covered in snow from december up till february but now because of global warming like snow is stretching a little bit longer as well but you can do dog sledging any kind of sport activities and actually the 
a ski the ski resort there is so famous that the king of Spain even skis there. Am I right? Paqueta Valet, yes. right? Paqueta Valet is where the royal family skis in. Yes, and apparently there is one of only two Moët Chandon uh, lounges in Paqueta Valet. You, you have to imagine what the Paqueta looks like. Paqueta looks like the Val de Bouy picture in the middle, right? Like this sort of like houses made of stone and slate roofs and like, you know, like really thick walls and like this picturesque little Pyrenees mountain villages that look like you're in the Alps, right? Because very much it looks like you're in Switzerland or something like that. And then suddenly there's like a Moet Chandon lounge. That's the sort of vibe that you get in Baqueira. It's a very high end, very premium ski resort. Uh, that's also very hard to reach because it's, far in the middle of nowhere and you have to like drive through all of this naking little uh you know rural countryside uh, roads and then when you get there it's like this beautiful uh little valley uh filled with tiny little villages with you yeah. know like stone houses and slate roofs and like chimneys and fireplaces it seems unbelievable that you just travel maybe two and a half hours from Barcelona and you end up there. But actually some people in summer, well, not summer, but in winter do this, right? They do skiing and then they come to the beach in the in the evening, which is really the wonder of Catalonia to have this diversity of spots you can do. Yes, absolutely. And we have a little video on uh, how, to, how to go like, uh, how do you say this in English? Uh, um, snow rackets. Snow rackets, yeah. Yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, a, yeah. I have a short video to show that you can go snow racket and you can go on dog sledging. Obviously, you can go uh, skiing and snowboarding and all of these other regular uh, snow sports, but you can also do like cross country skiing and things like that in uh, the Pyrenees in general and in Valderan. Actually, so I many adventures that I have done a uh, snow racketing before, and it is more tiring than you think. Actually, <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I know that it's tiring. It's probably going to be super tiring to be walking in the snow, and like you know, it's a lot of effort, right? Yeah, but it, it's really, it's really interesting. And for me, as someone who's never really seen snow like in Singapore as much as you can see in Catalonia, it was a very exciting experience. So yeah, I recommend it as well. And also, we talked about Val de Bui a little bit. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site with the very famous UNESCO Heritage Church. And Which is something the one that on the I. Picture. Yep, exactly. And the one on the very right is um, Mondra Bay uh, Gorge. Yeah, Gorge. I was going to say George Gorge. And this is actually a really beautiful thing that you can see on a train that travels through the crevices of the rock formations. I think something really spectacular about this place is just how green it is. And it's not just something you can view, but you can also do kayaking and canoeing within the gorge itself. So something many of my Catalan friends recommend me to do when I have more time to go inland. Yes, and this and this gorge uh, has obviously the river in the middle. You can also go on a hot air balloon through the gorge. The same company, Contiki, that does the tours over in Tona, over the pitch fields, can also does these tours on hot air balloon through the gorge over the water they get really low and it's really impressive and this gorge on the on the sides they have carved little paths because those are the paths that people used to use in in like old times like in medieval times to kind of like walk along the gorge so if you can imagine the side of the wall of the mountain is being carved so that there's like a path and people walk in the middle and there are also stairs that are not from the faint of heart where you can actually walk to cross over the mountains to the other side because that was the way that people used to cross before and so they've rehabilitated those steps and those staircases and you can actually walk them but you can just imagine like this wall with like wooden steps on the wall itself that you can you know step up on and cross to the other side of the of the wall it's quite uh i think you have to be really brave to do that yeah not no fear of heights clearly <laughs> definitely not and i have a short video of the of la valle Bui which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Bali, which has all these Romanesque churches, like the one you can see here, San Clement de Taul, which will show you, because what's interesting of these churches is that inside they have paintings, they have murals, they have frescoes, the most important of which is actually is in the National Museum of Catalonia in Barcelona, but they've done a projection inside the church. So when you walk in, you see projected what the mural used to look like, what the fresco used to look like when it was there. So you will see that in this video.
you could see, right? Like uh, the the projection of the of the fresco is really impressive, and the original, as I said, is kept in the National Museum of Art of Catalonia in Barcelona. But it's very nice to visit them. Interesting, yeah. Super nice. And then we also have another adventure activity that you can do. You can do white water rafting. We don't have a video for that, but you can do white water rafting in the Pallars Chusar and in the um, in the rivers of the Pyrenees. So when there's no melts, that you have like all these amazing rivers, and you know some of them are quite wild, and so you can go white water rafting. But you can also go, you know, paragliding and do all sorts of other like let's say air-based sports like paragliding. So let's have a look at this paragliding video. Well, 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 like, again, like, I don't know if I would do it. Maybe, maybe I would, maybe I would, but uh, the views must <laughs> be amazing, right? View? Yeah, I think it's worth it for that bird's eye view. Very beautiful. Absolutely. And so Lleida Pyrenees, it basically incorporates pretty much all of the region that is north of Catalonia all the way until Costa Brava Pyrenees. And so you also have a, a lot of different uh, other areas, not just like Lleida and not just uh, Valderan. You also have La Val de Núria, which is kind of like north of Barcelona. If you go on a straight line, uh, towards France, you would hit La Val de Núria, which is this valley that also has a, a ski resort, but also in the summertime, it's very popular because you can take uh, Al Cramallera, which is like a funicular train that goes all the way up to the mountain. And then in the middle, there's like, a, you know, the ski resort in the middle of this valley. And so it's very beautiful uh, and it's very family friendly, but also if you're not a major skier, if you're not somebody who's like super expert skier, Val de Núria is pretty simple and it's pretty easy it's for beginners. So it's kind of nice uh, to see. And I have a small video to show you because it's very quaint that you can go on a little train, on a little funicular train, mountain train, and that has been in operation for like decades. And then get into the, the little uh, valley in the middle, the valley in the middle, and see the facilities, go skiing, go hiking in the summer, see the, you know, there's like a dam with like, which collects the water from the river. It's, it's pretty quaint. It's like typical place that as a kid, I used to go uh, with the school, you know, they take you to La Valle de Nuria. And so we have a video yeah. to show you that's definitely a hidden gem that tourists never visit. It's something that very much locals do, right? Yeah. Did you see the train? It's kind of cute, right? Yeah, little cute one. Looks like the one you see in fairy tales as well, right? Yes, exactly. So that was the, a little bit of a taster for what uh, Lleida Pyrenees looks like and for the sort of things that you can do. It's definitely a nature destination, but also cultural because of the UNESCO World Heritage uh, sites of the, of the Romanesque churches of La Valle de Bouy. And also because of all these quaint little uh, villages that they all have their own little churches and their beautiful stone houses and obviously very nice hearty mountain food to go with. And on that note, tomorrow is all going to be about the food and the, and the wine, right? So tomorrow we are going to talk about Catalan gastronomy. We're going to do a tour of Torres Winery. We are even Tahir and I going to, and, and actually two other people, we are going to have three versions of how to make pan tomacat which is basically yeah. the most simplest, the most delicious, and the most famous Catalan food that you can ever think of is pan tomacat, which is basically bread with tomato. But there is a trick to how to eat that bread with tomato. And so tomorrow you are going to learn how to make that dish with us. Three people will show you, Tahir and I will show you our version, and then you're gonna have Torres, uh, winery will show you their own version and then Alex and Frances will show you their own version as well. So you're going to have a gastronomic tour at the beginning. First, we're going to start in La Bucaria Market. So we will go live from the very famous and very colorful market of La Bucaria in Barcelona. Then we will have a gastronomic uh, uh, presentation, a short, brief presentation on, you know, what is Catalan food? What is Catalan gastronomy? What influences it? The history, the best dishes. Like you're going to learn about one of the world's best um, gastronomy, as we saw on Monday, uh, seven of the last 20 years, 
the best restaurant in the world was in Catalonia. And so we definitely have amazing food. And then after that, we're gonna go to Torres Winery. We're gonna have a winery tour. We're gonna do a wine tasting and you're gonna learn um, how to taste wine so that you can impress you know, your next uh, friend or your family or whoever it is that you, next time you're having some wine. So that will be all tomorrow. So come prepared. We're also going to make a scalivada which I kind of like started making today so the finished product will be ready. And that is another yeah. extremely simple Catalan dish. Uh, and so come prepare tomorrow. Stay tuned for the ingredients that you need to bring. And we will see you back here about an hour and a half ago from now, tomorrow, whichever uh, time zone in the world you are in. Yeah, can't wait to see you. And if you can bring bread, tomatoes, salt, I think you would be pretty much ready and to- And olive oil. Yeah. Very important. And olive oil. <laughs> Bread, so I hope you tomatoes, olive oil, and some salt. And that's all you need to make Catalonia's most famous dish. Yep. So come with an empty stomach, and hopefully, we can get hungry and eat together. And as I have been doing in the last couple of days, I am going to finish today by sharing with you the Grand Tour of Catalonia video, which is a new campaign, a new idea, a new project by the Catalan Tourist Board that will show you all of Catalonia across 14 days on a road trip, which you can go around Catalonia, visit all the most important places, pretty much all of the ones that you have been exploring this week with us and more, and then collect little stamps in each of the tourism offices and basically see all of Catalonia. So pay attention to the video and see if you get more inspiration in case we haven't given you already enough inspiration. And we, on that note, Tahir and I will see you tomorrow. See you guys. Good night. See you. Welcome to a land of short distances and long trails. Within a few hours from the Mediterranean waves and the peaks of the Pyrenees, the rice of the Delta, the anchovies of La Scala, or the mountains of Praves, of the lush Monsen. Welcome to a small land to travel across, but great to discover. Made of water, wind, fire and snow. Of age-old stones and landscapes to wonder. Trails where time stops and so many other spots to discover. The pleasure of taking the longest path and sneak into a secondary road. Look around you with fresh eyes. Valleys, mountains, rivers and fields. Bell towers and cellars, orchards and dry farms. Taste the most admired gastronomy, smell the colorful fruit trees. Admire a heritage cherished throughout centuries and traditions that cross generations. Welcome to a great adventure next to home. Welcome to a journey full of journeys. Welcome to the Grand Tour of Catalonia.